One person is dead and another is injured after a random accident occurred on the movie set um, out in New Mexico. Uh, and it involved actor and producer Alec Baldwin, as you see uh, right here. Um, and so this all happened on the set of his movie, his new movie called Rust, and it's a, a Western movie. And it all occurred when a prop firearm on the set was discharged and um, it killed one crew member and it injured the director. Let's go into more details uh, here from CNN. So the director of photography, Helena Hutchins, who's 42 years old, was transported to the hospital via helicopter and pronounced dead by medical personnel at the University of New Mexico Hospital. Uh, director Joel Souza, who's 48, was transported to Christus St. Vincent's Regional Medical <coughs> Center by ambulance for care. Uh, he did survive, but details on his condition were not yet released. So according to the investigators, investigators, it appears that the scene being filmed in the movie with Alec Baldwin um, involved the use of a prop firearm when it was discharged, is what the statement said from um, the authorities. Uh, detectives are investigating how and what type of projectile was discharged. Uh, and the sheriff's office, was, the sheriff's office also uh, went on to say that the investigation remains open and active, and that no charges have been filed. So this is involving uh, Alec Baldwin, who was producing the film, and apparently was also acting in it. And there was a scene with a, a firearm, it went off, um, things went badly. So immediately when I saw this this morning, um, the first thing I think many people thought of because it was also trending as this story was breaking was what happened back in 1993 with um, Bruce Lee's son, Brandon Lee on the set uh, of the movie The Crow. So while he was filming the movie The Crow, actor Brandon Lee, he was killed when he was struck by a bullet from a gun that was supposed to have just have blanks in it, but it had a bullet lodged in the barrel instead, um, which again, it goes to this mysterious death that happened with him. And then, you know, we know how his father died uh, uh, randomly and mysteriously as well. So um, the uh, his family, at least his sister, uh, Brandon Lee's sister tweets from his account and she saw the same similarity as well. And she tweeted, our hearts go out to the family of Helena Hutchins and Joel Souza and all involved in the incident on rust. No one should ever be killed by a gun <coughs> on a film set, period. So there's also one other instance to it, and maybe it wasn't as big of a thing, but it was also 1984. Even blanks can be deadly, CNN went on to, uh, uh, to acknowledge. Even blanks can be deadly if fired at very close range. In 1984, actor John Eric Hexum was playing around with a gun on the set of Cover Up, Golden Opportunity, and he died after putting the gun to his head and pulling the trigger, joking around. Um, and it had some effects still there. Um, uh, before we go to the, uh, you guys talking about this, I do want to go to uh, uh, one moment. There is this specialist or he's a, a professional when it comes to prop weapons and firearms and things like that on movie sets. And uh, he was speaking with CNN about how these things work and how it potentially failed. Let's go to that really fast. In the film business, we take extreme caution with any kind of weapons. Typically, we will do a safety brief with the cast and crew. We'll introduce the weapon to the cast and crew. We'll let them examine it. We'll explain the safety precautions that go with each type of prop weapon. Typical prop load will be about 25 to 50% of the gunpowder in an actual projectile load that would be used in a regular weapon. With that in mind, there has to be safety precautions. There have to be safety distances. And at some point, there was a mishap and those were not followed. As you can see, there were some images there of Alec Baldwin on the phone. I think that was after he spoke with the authorities about what happened. He seemed apparently distraught, <clears throat> um, as you could imagine. Um, after that went down, but also so that um, the, he's a movie set prop master. That man's name is uh, Joseph Fisher. He went on to talk about then how these things can happen, where even though that maybe the the prop weapon is used correctly, those protocols were put in place can still harm people. Let's listen to that. Anytime you're dealing with a gunpowder load, which is what's in a prop weapon that fires blanks, you're going to have gas, you can have heat, you can have air coming out of it. Even though there's no actual physical projectile mounted on the front of that weapon on, on the cartridge, there is projectiles that do come out, the powder, the gas, and those can cause physical injury within 25 to 50 feet, depending on the load. Now that was actually stuck out because um, he said 25 to 50 feet, it can still cause some level of damage. And I see a lot of films where it looks like the scene is shot with them much closer than 25 to 50 feet with a firearm or a prop firearm in this particular case. Um, and it can still harm people. So I wonder to the degree to which they keep this from happening on a regular basis because it sounds 
pretty dangerous, uh, you guys. So um, before we get to the details of how, you know, the reason why these guns are always in films in the first place, um, first off, I want to hear what you guys have to say about this. Well, uh, from what I've been seeing, you know, throughout the day as this story kind of develops a little more, uh, there was already an issue on the set with regards to safety of the crew. Um, you had the union workers who did walk out um, based on what I've read a couple days ago. So what you had there when this accident happened was all of the non-union mm -hmm. uh, individuals and the unions released a statement. They made it clear, you know, listen, no union members were on the call sheet that day. These were other folks that they had brought in. So you had a lot of people who weren't already, I guess, on the set uh, throughout most of this. They were probably unfamiliar with it. So that could have caused problems. But again, the fact that they had already raised concerns, uh, including about some of the prop weapons there, that's a huge red flag. You know, why are we not listening to these workers who were already bringing up concerns about the safety of the set, the safety of the props? And then a tragedy like this unfolds, and you have a lot of people sitting there saying, had you listened to us, we might have been able to avoid this. So, so that's another tragedy that took place here is the fact that these workers, as we see in industry across the country, they bring up the concerns. But nobody listens to them until something horrendous happens, just like what we've seen with this story. Yeah, I'm just kind of uh, just bewildered by the idea that 30 years after Brandon Lee, resources haven't been poured into figuring out how to make safe fake guns. That like that seems like something we should be able to do, something we should be able to accomplish. Right. Um, just as a culture, as a society, and especially as a movie industry that rakes in tens of billions of dollars every single year. It would seem like we should be able to make a gun that doesn't harm people, but you know, gives you all of the effects. I'm just shocked by that. Um, this technology seems so primitive um, in its usage and, and how it's uh, how it's carried out. Um, obviously, this is a tragedy. Uh, the idea that you know professionals walked off of the job for safety concerns and they bring on whoever they whoever the hell they bring on to replace them, and something this tragic happens, it's awful. Um, obviously, you know. I hope her family is is able to cope pretty decently with this because this is this is brutal. Yeah, they said one of her last, or at least maybe her last Instagram or, or, or Twitter post was her riding a horse on the set, and she's like, one of the perks working on a movie set, you can ride your horse. You know, a paraphrase about what I, about what she last posted. So there didn't seem to be, uh, I mean. An issue, at least from that particular post about how things are going on that set. Maybe she didn't know the degree, but you would think everyone maybe had an ear out about what was happening on that set. But again, I feel like this happens in every industry. <clears throat> I thought about it just with politics and anything from from as simple as like you know you see you work at a restaurant to even something as big and 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 could affect a lot of people like on a movie set. It's a huge production, and I think people get comfortable. Again, the Brandon Lee thing happened in '93, and before that was '84 with, uh, with with that smaller film. But I think people, after going through the protocols, you got the safety feature and that feature. People are like, "Oh, we got it together. Oh man, no one has been hurt or injured, and luckily killed from this type of stuff." And then once you let that guard down and think we're just flowing easily and smoothly, ah, it's okay. And then this happens again. So things like safety, and then when you're actually using firearms on a set, there's no time to let your guard down. But you know, we get comfortable with everything that we're doing. People play with guns all the time thinking this, oh, I've had this gun for 20 years, it's fine, you know? And then that's when the bad thing happens. And it, it, I don't think movie sets are off of uh, that kind of thing. But again, there's people whose jobs there are to make sure this doesn't happen. And apparently, as you mentioned, Farron, it wasn't, they weren't listened to. Well, and, and you know, another part too, uh, as was pointed out here, there, there's no reason why they can't figure out how to make a prop gun that doesn't actually, you know, have the potential to kill anybody or or even hurt anybody. I mean, when you look at technology today, the things that we're able to do. Yeah. And, and <laughs> gonna, people to Mars. I, I know, and you're gonna <laughs> tell me we can't make a gun a, a fake gun that goes bang. Or even that, I mean, look, even if we're not at that point, okay, I get it. Small movie, low budget, but you can't add that in post. You know, you can't go back and say, okay, we got to put in the sound of a gunshot, then we got to have a little burst in there too. I mean, that that that's really 
not exceptionally difficult, not exceptionally expensive. And in this particular instance, you could have saved somebody's life. So I don't get why something like this is even possible to happen. Because you know we could either have very safe replicas that do not fire anything, or my God, just do it in, in the edit. Just put it in in the edit and move on. People with the might next notice scene. that. You know, people are gonna notice stuff like that. You know, if you see something, Rick, there's lots of movie <coughs> nerds and wonks out there that if they see something off, there's people who watch movies looking for this one, uh, you know, uh, the, some some kind of a, a of a flow problem or oh that looks so fake. There's gotten a point where everything has to look so real in movies. If you try to do something in post, and I'm not sure where the technology comes when it comes to making a real fire, a fake firearm look like a real one, but it probably looks fake. And suddenly people don't want to see I'm, that movie. I'm anymore. sorry, man. The most popular movies out right now are freaking dudes in tights. Uh, you couldn't get much faker than that MCU stuff. I don't think people really need that much realness or authenticity. They and do. besides, if some if somebody's really crying about it on the fringe, you know, we can't cater <laughs> what we do to the fringes. These dorks. Come no, on now. It'll 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 be the it'll be the main <laughs> telling you there's a reason why we all know about it is because we hear about it all the time. To the degree to which sure. people are like, oh that movie is so fake. If you look about even look, you talked about the the Marvel movies. They do stunts and stuff, like the Transformers movies where they and war movies where things have to blow up and flip. There's actual yeah. explosions. There's pyrotechnic professionals that come on and do this stuff. There's real fire, you know, but it's a controlled fire. And again, we get full of ourselves and go, Oh, I got. I've been handling this for 20 years. What could go wrong? Let's just do it. And maybe a shortcut was taken. Maybe they were short on time. Who knows? I don't know the details behind any of the reasons why it got skipped over. But it's just human nature to bypass these things and try and still make sure it looks real. And hopefully, we'll get another reset that lasts. I mean, 30 years is too short, <laughs> you know. So, well, and I think you know, technology is obviously the solution to this. You you can make something. That is realistic, you know. That has recoil. That has, you know, a burst at the barrel. And I don't think that we need to put the nation's top scientists on it to try to figure this out. I'm sure there's probably people watching this that are thinking, "Hey, you know what? I could probably do that." So if you can, fantastic, folks. Go save lives yeah. by doing something like that. Because, and I know, look, I'm not an engineer. But it doesn't seem like it's super, super complicated. I mean, again, you're not building rocket ships. You're just trying to make a gun that, that looks and sounds real that also isn't going to kill somebody on accident. We need to get those MIT homies who built those robot attack dogs. Yes. You seen those videos? Yeah. We gotta get those dudes on it, man. Every time we have those videos, I like doing it because it's, we need, I don't know. I just like seeing the development of the technology. So those things as we go on, see what happens and see what gets better. But no, yeah, you know what? Maybe we'll get to the point where it's done digitally, or it's. I mean, there's a certain level of post production to it because, you know, I, I feel horrible for her family. I mean, you know, she's on set doing her job. She's a professional and she's been doing this, and she's only 42 years old. And you know, you lose, you lose a family member and a friend over something like this, a general oversight. And it happens, of course, it happens to every industry, but this is this is a big deal. And um, you got a lot of people that you have to protect. Think about everyone else on that set. They got to finish this film now. It's just it's it's not a good feeling. It's not a good look. We were going to get into more on how the crossover from the NRA and Hollywood has their obsession with guns. It's going to be for another day because that definitely stuck out to me when it came to relating to this film. How so many Hollywood types and how many Hollywood films and TV shows are centered around violence and guns. But many of the people that are involved in this production and the actors and everyone involved in it in real life just aren't about it. But that kind of doesn't match up. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.